Hi everyone, welcome back to Words 4. Once again, my name is Sasha, and today we're going to be reading The Snail and the Whale, written by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Axel Scheffler. A great thank you to Puffin Books for publishing. Let's begin. This is the tale of a tiny snail and a great big gray-blue humpback whale. This is a rock as black as soot and this is a snail with an itchy foot. Hmm, what does itchy foot mean? Does it actually mean that the snail wants to itch its foot? No, it can't be that, right? Because snails don't have feet. Well, itchy foot means that the snail is eager to explore. So this is a rock as black as soot and this is a snail with an itchy foot. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffed and sighed, the sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. These are the other snails in the flock, who all stuck tight to the smooth black rock, and said to the snail with the itchy foot, be quiet, don't wiggle, sit still, stay put. But the tiny sea snail sniffed and sighed, then cried, I've got it, I'll hitch a ride. So why didn't the other snails want the eager snail to go out? That's right, they cared about the eager snail's safety. They wanted their friend to be safe. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail that looped and curled and said, ride wanted around the world. So if you can see on the rock, the snail's written, ride wanted around the world. This is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright. A humpback whale, immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song. Of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tale of the humpback whale he held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, come sail with me. This is the sea, so wild and free, that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far off lands. With fiery mountains and golden sands. What do you think a fiery mountain is? Can you guess? Excellent guess. A fiery mountain is a volcano, as we can see on the picture right here. These are the waves that arched and crashed, that foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed, the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. These are the caves beneath the waves where colorful fish with feathery fins and the sharks with hideous toothy grins swim past the whale and the snail on his tail. This is the sky so vast and high, sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm. With zigzag lightning flashing and frightening the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. As she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves and the caves and the golden sand, she gazed and gazed, amazed by it all. And she said to the whale, I feel so small. But then came the day the whale lost his way. These are the speedboats running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place, upsetting the whale with their ear-splitting roar, making him swim too close to the shore. And so, what do you think is going to happen when the whale swims too close to the shore? This is the tide slipping away. And this is the whale lying beached in a bay. So, do you know what it means to be beached? Exactly. It's unfortunate. The whale was stuck on the sand and could not get back into the water. Quick, off the sand, back to the sea, 
cried the snail. I can't move on land. I'm too big, moaned the whale. The snail felt helpless and terribly small. Then, I've got it, she cried, and started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. What do you think the snail's going to do? I wonder what it is. This is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. This is the teacher holding her chalk, telling the class, sit straight, don't talk. This is the board as black as soot, and this is the snail with the itchy foot. A snail, a snail, the teacher turns pale. Look, say the children, it's leaving a trail. Why do you think the teacher turned pale? That's right, it's because the teacher felt afraid or shocked. And so the snail left the trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail saying, save the whale. These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool, squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming into the bay, and these are the villagers shouting hooray as the whale and the snail travel safely away. Back to the dock and the flock on the rock who said, how time's flown and haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told their wonderful tale of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves and of how the snail, so small and frail, with her looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale. Then the humpback whale held out his tail, and on crawled snail after snail after snail. And they sang to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of the gray-blue humpback whale. The end. What an awesome story. I especially like the fact that it rhymed. Wasn't that cool? Now I have a few questions for you before we go. So first, do you think that the snail did a good thing by exploring the world? Well, I sure think that she did. She faced her fears and was courageous and she made a new friend. And second, how do you think that the snail helped the whale? You are exactly right. The snail helped the whale by creating a little trail on the chalkboard telling people to save the whale. And why do you think the snail decided to help the whale? Again, you're right. The snail felt that the whale was her friend and you do anything for your friends. You always try to help your friends. I really enjoyed this book, and I hope you did as well. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Words 4. My name is Sasha. Have a great day.